masses of whales all around the coast. And the word soon got back to Britain and America that there were so many here. And whale oil was worth such a lot that it was worth them coming all the way down to Australia to, to get the whale oil. So before Tasmania was settled in 1803, there were actually whalers around the coast um, in small numbers catching whales. Um, the whale oil was used, it was very important in the Industrial Revolution which was happening at the time. Um, it was used for lighting and also for, as a lubricant and particularly the spermaceti which you got from the sperm whales, the head of the sperm whales, that was a really fine oil and um, it made the candles burn better and also was really good in fine equipment. One of the first settlers in Hobart was a, a fellow called Reverend Knotwood and he wrote a diary which um, told all about for, um, early days in Hobart. He particularly mentions the whales. Um, one time he said that there were so many in the estuary just next to Hobart that you couldn't cross from the eastern shore to the western shore on a small boat without it being too dangerous. Um, and it's not a, a long distance. Um, another time he said he couldn't sleep because of the noise of whales out on the river. In Hobart, uh, the government didn't allow um, local people to build whaling boats, um, and, or any type of boat in fact, and they didn't encourage any sort of commerce. And this is because the settlement was basically a convict settlement, and they were scared that convicts would abscond in either trading or whaling vessels. Uh, the scrimshaw is a, a craft that the whalers um, got into because there were there, there were times on uh, sailing ships when there wasn't much to do because the wind wasn't um, blowing in the right direction or wasn't blowing enough more likely. So they developed a craft where they um, engraved pictures on on whale bones or whale teeth or even turned them to make walking sticks and so on. Um, these are now very, very collectible items. Whaling declined from the mid, um, or from the sort of 1870s onwards um, because whale oil was no longer needed. Petroleum products had now become popular and basically replaced the whale oil. And since then, I guess the, the main contact that Hobart's had with whaling has been as sort of a base or a setting off point for the anti-whalers who are now chasing the Japanese whale ships. The Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery uh, has actually been collecting some objects from the, the Sea Shepherd and the Eighty Gills, so you know, sometime well in the future we'll be looking at that part of Tasmania's whaling history as well. <laughs>